Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, as you may be aware, my background is in engineering. Um, now, quality control is not really my specialty within engineering, uh, but it is something that was covered at least in passing in classes that I took back in engineering school. And there's one concept from quality control that I have found very useful just as a consumer buying products over the years. That's the concept of the bathtub curve. Uh, so I wanted to explain that to you today, and it'll be easier to explain if I can draw it out. So let me get a sheet of paper and turn the camera around to where you can see that. All right, hopefully you can see this okay. So to start off with, Let's just assume that you're a quality control engineer working for a company that manufactures light bulbs. And as part of your routine testing, uh, you get a batch of a thousand light bulbs to test. And so you plug in all the light bulbs and you plot uh, when they burn out over time. So uh, we've got number of failures, you know, number of light bulbs that burn out, and then we've got time on the x-axis. Uh, so maybe the first day you've got a hundred light bulbs out of your thousand that burn out, and then the second day you've got 50, and the third day you've got 10, uh, and then you've got one and then you've got a couple of days where you don't have any, then maybe you have another one, another one, and then eventually, you know, you have another 10 that burn out, uh, another, another 50, uh, and then you get a whole bunch burning out kind of up here, and then eventually you're gonna run out of light bulbs and they're gonna trail off. And so if you make a plot of the probability of failure over time, it's going to start out relatively high, it's going to rapidly drop off, it's going to remain low for a while, and then it's going to increase with time. Because you know, right at the beginning, you've got you know, products that have manufacturing defects. Uh, you know, they, maybe they forgot to evacuate all the air from the light bulb, and so it burns for three minutes and then burns out. Uh, or maybe, uh, maybe the filament itself is uh, not manufactured very well. You know, maybe it's not connected right, and so it doesn't work at all. Whatever the case may be, you'll have a bunch of failures up front due to manufacturing defects, this is what we call the burn-in period. Uh, then you'll have a period where the rate of failure is pretty low, uh, and that's the usable life of the product. And then after a certain point, the rate of failure is going to start to increase again, and that's the burn-out period. Uh, or, or it's the time when this product starts wearing out just from normal use. And because the shape of this curve kind of looks like the profile of a bathtub, we refer to this as the bathtub curve. And this principle holds true for just about every manufactured or mass-produced product. The shape of the curve may vary a little bit uh, you know, on the time axis. I mean, obviously, you know, for a light bulb, the average burnout period is going to be different for an incandescent uh, bulb versus for an LED bulb. I mean, for an incandescent, this might be one year. For an LED, it might be 20 years. Um, you know, similarly, you might have some product that is very sensitive to manufacturing defects, and if it doesn't if it's not manufactured correctly, it's going to burn out or, or fail immediately. So it's going to have a very steep curve at the beginning. Uh, and then the ones that, that work, work well for a while. And then as soon as something goes wrong, it's very steep out at the back too. Uh, you might have another product where it's more gradual. You know, so the, the exact dimensions of the curve can vary a little bit, but the general concept remains the same. You know, the general pattern uh, is pretty much the same for everything. 
Now, where this becomes important for the consumer is that you've got different companies that use different strategies for managing their product over its life cycle, you know, over the duration of this curve. So, for example, uh, you could have one company that pursues what we'll call strategy one. And this company wants to be known as a purveyor of high quality products. And so what they do is they implement a rigorous quality control program that basically examines their product. They do a lot of testing on everything that rolls off the assembly line. And so they're able to catch and eliminate all of these defective products up front. So they only ship products that are uh, correctly manufactured. They've already eliminated the burn-in period from the perspective of the consumer. Uh, and so then they'll set their warranty uh, to, to expire about the time that the product is going to wear out. Now, another company might pursue what I'm going to call strategy two, uh, where they look at this and say, okay, all of that testing that's required to pursue strategy one is really expensive. You know, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of human involvement. And so instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass off the duty for identifying defective products to the consumer, and we'll just make sure we offer a hassle-free warranty that expires right at the end of the burn-in period. Uh, and so that way we can offer much lower prices. Uh, and in general, we're still going to have satisfied customers because, you know, all the people who get these defective products during the burn-in period uh, can just ship them back to us and we'll ship them a brand new one. So that's what I'm calling strategy two. Well, another company comes along and they pursue what I'm going to call strategy three which is pretty similar to strategy two. The difference is that this company looks at strategy number two and says, well, you know, during this product lifetime period where the rate of failure is very low, it doesn't really cost us anything to honor a warranty because there aren't really products failing here. So we'll just move our warranty period out here uh, and then we can still offer essentially the same product as, uh, as if we were pursuing strategy two at essentially the same price, but now we have a longer warranty period that's gonna look better to the customer. And finally, we could have a company that pursues what I'm calling strategy four, where they don't do any quality control up front, they don't offer a warranty, uh, and so they have some dissatisfied customers who get defective products up front and don't have really any recourse for that, but they have the lowest prices on the market because they're not spending any money solving these problems. And so people will still buy from them uh, because they have the lowest prices on the market. And as long as the burn-in period is not too great a percentage of their total uh, you know, volume of production, the, the number of positive reviews that are uh, ecstatic about getting a, a decent product for a rock-bottom price may overwhelm the handful of customers who are raking them over the coals for shipping them a defective product and then not supporting it. Now, there's certainly other variations on these strategies, uh, especially if you get into sleazy marketing practices like hiring people to write good reviews or to discredit the bad reviews or something. Um, but I think this is really sufficient to sort of illustrate the spectrum of approaches that companies can take to quality control as it pertains to this bathtub curve. And this is helpful to understand because as a consumer, we're usually not privy to this information. You know, the head of quality control for a given company probably knows where the time intervals lie on this graph. But as a consumer, you generally don't have access to that information. 
And so understanding how the company approaches it can tell you a lot about how you can expect the product to perform over time. So to illustrate this, let me give you a couple of scenarios. So scenario number one is I want to buy a product that I can depend on to function reliably right out of the box. Uh, so I need to go with a strategy one company. Well, how do I identify you know, a strategy one company? product or a strategy one company, uh, there's a couple of things I can look for. Number one, I'm going to look for a really long warranty period, uh, maybe 10 years, 20 years, preferably lifetime, depending on what the product is. Uh, but you'll notice strategy three companies are also going to offer comparably long warranty periods. So the other thing I need to do is do a really thorough review of product reviews to make sure that the company I'm buying from is not shipping defective products. Because even if the vast majority of reviews are highly positive, if they've had, you know, if there are even a few who legitimately point out that they've shipped a defective product, then that means either they're not pursuing strategy one or they're not pursuing it very effectively. Uh, so, you know, typically strategy one products are going to be more expensive because the company's investing in all that upfront quality control uh, and they're going to have long warranties and most importantly, they're not going to have any legitimate uh, claims of defective products or products that were defective upon arrival or showed problems uh, shortly after installation. For example, uh, maybe I'm buying a rifle scope. You know, I think at one point Leupold was a strategy one company. You know, they really built up a strong reputation for quality. And yet, in recent years, I've seen a number of reviews where someone received a Leupold product and it was defective right out of the box. And they always try to qualify that by saying, well, the, the company was really good about replacing it. Well, of course they were, but what that tells me is that Leupold is no longer a strategy one company. Either they have changed their strategy, they're you know, maybe going with strategy three now, or uh, they've simply had a lapse in the quality of their quality control program, uh, and they're no longer implementing strategy one effectively. So whereas five years ago, if I needed a rifle scope that I could depend on right out of the box, I probably would have gone with a loophole. Now, probably not. Scenario number two uh, is I need a product that will deliver good performance over a long period of time, something that you know I can rely on, but I've got the time to do my own testing up front and validate that it's a good quality product before I have to depend on it. In that case, I'm probably going to want a strategy two company or a product made by a strategy two company. And so in that case, I'm actually going to look for something with a very short warranty period. Uh, and, and then what I'm going to do is when I buy the product, I'm going to totally beat it up you know, during that warranty period. I'm going to subject it to the roughest possible service conditions that I can uh, for the duration of the warranty period or you know, perhaps a little longer than that. And then you know, say it has a 30-day warranty. If it survives 60 days of intensive service, then it's probably a strategy to a company with a product that now is well out into its usable life and will probably continue to give me good service for uh, a long time to come, depending on how long its usable service life is. Scenario number three, or maybe I should say example number three, because this is a, a tangible example from my own experience. Once again, from the optics industry, interestingly enough. Uh, but a few years ago, I bought a Bushnell TRS-25 red dot sight. Uh, if I remember correctly, it had a one-year warranty, and it worked fine during that first year of service. Uh, but then within about a month after the warranty ran out, it basically self-destructed. Uh, so what that tells me uh, is two things. Number one, Bushnell appears to be a strategy three company because 
their product failed right after the warranty ran out. Number two, it tells me that the TRS-25 has a very short service life. You know, it only lasts about a year before they tend to wear out, uh, which is a lot shorter than what I would typically want in, you know, some kind of uh, an optic you know, like that. Uh, so going forward, if I buy other Bushnell products, I'll have it in the back of my mind that you'll look at the length of the warranty and don't expect the product to last much longer than that. And scenario number four is I'm buying a product that I really don't need to depend on. I just want something to play with. And so I don't really care much about quality control, but I probably want something that's dirt cheap. And so I'll probably end up going with a strategy four company or a product from a strategy four company because they will typically be the cheapest. Uh, and, you know, going back to our optics example, I've got a couple of generic brand imported red dot sites that never had any warranty whatsoever. And yet, so far at least, they've already delivered better long-term performance than the Bushnell TRS-25, and they did it for like a fifth of the price. So take that for what you will. So that's the bathtub curve for you. Uh, as I said, this is something that I've often referred back to just as a consumer, and yet I think it's a concept that's not widely circulated outside of the engineering, manufacturing, and quality control community. Uh, so hopefully you found this discussion helpful. Until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.